Welcome back to this second part of Land Law Mortgages. Now before the break, we uh, considered how mortgages were created prior to 1925. What we are going to do now though, is look at how they were created subsequently. And also of course, we look at protection issues as well. Now, after 1925, the system of mortgages was radically overhauled, and it needed to be because when you considered prior to 1925, it was the lender who owned the property and effectively you had the borrower paying on this asset that he didn't own. Well, the overall uh, culminated in Law of Property Act 1925 sections 85 to 87 and with the certainly with the implication of the uh, Land Registration Act 2002, well, this is the only form of mortgage or charge which is capable of being registered against a registered legal estate by the land registry. Now, there are two different ways that a legal uh, mortgage can be created under the new system. And a mortgage can be created by a demise for a terms of your absolute subject to a provision for cessor on redemption. I'll repeat that. It can be created by a demise for a terms of your absolute subject to a provision for cessor on redemption. We'll come back to that in a minute. It can also be created by a, char a charge by deed, which is expressed to be by way of a legal mortgage. What does cessor on redemption mean? So it can be created in respect of there being a cessor on redemption. Well, when you look at free old land, which is governed by section 85 of the Law of Property Act 1925, the mortgagor, instead of transferring the fee simple and the mortgagee being the registered owner, what he does is that he grants a lease of the property to the mortgagee. The lease will be terminated when the loan is repaid. The term for this, of course, is cessor on redemption. Now, in order to ensure that the lease doesn't come to an end, until the debt has been repaid, the lease is normally granted for an extremely long period of time. And in the act, we see that it is for 3,000 years. Now, if a mortgagee and mortgagor try to use the old system of conveyancing, uh, then in getting a, a, in the mortgage or giving a mortgage to the mortgagee, then under section 85.2, it is automatically converted to a 3,000-year lease subject to assessor on redemption. All right, let's try and make that even clearer, if that is possible, because I think it is clear so far, but maybe not to you. What it means is this, that the mortgagor, the borrower, is the one who's buying the property. He's the legal owner. But he is getting money in order to be able to buy that property. It means, therefore, that the mortgagee will need to have something to show that his money has just bought that property. So what happens is the mortgagor, the borrower, gives him an interest in land. And that interest in land is a lease. And that is why... Whenever you do mortgages or look at the cases to do with mortgagees, the reason that we see that they're able to, for example, come in and take back the property is because they have a lease and as such, they have a right in land. But the way to deal with it is that it is a 3,000 year lease because in reality, the bank does not really want your house, do they? They want their money. They've lent you the monies to purchase the property, they want you to pay it back with interest. So pretty much that is what it means. Now, what about leasehold land? Well, that part, because remember I said to you, leasehold can also be sold in England, and so the banks are able to also lend on this. Well, this is governed by Section 86 of the Law of Property Act, 1925. And under the 1925 system, in relation to leasehold land, Section 86 provides that for a mortgage to be created, a sublease is granted to the mortgagee. Again, if you've done the leasehold uh, lectures, you will understand that what the mortgagee has is a sublease because the head lease, as it were, is invested or basically vested in the uh, mortgagor. 
That way, the mortgagee is given an estate or interest in the land in question. Now, if a mortgagee and mortgagor tries again to use the old system of conveyancing, then what we see on the section 86.2 is that again, it will automatically convert it to a sublease, the period of which would be the unexpired period of the lease, less 10 days subject to assessor on redemption. Now, remember that with a freehold, it doesn't have any limit. But with a leasehold, let's say you have a 99-year lease. Now, as I say, if it's freehold, 3,000-year lease. But with a leasehold, it is 10 days less than the period that you would have the lease for. Now then, you can also create a mortgage as a charge by way of a legal mortgage. And this was the new method under Section 87 of the LPA 1925. Now, the rationale behind it was that the mortgagee was given the same rights and powers as if it had given or it had been granted a 3,000-year lease or a sublease, as I've discussed earlier. Now, the powers of the mortgagee are created in a mortgage deed. This is a requirement. The mortgage must be created by deed. There is no other requirement as to the form. So, in effect, the mortgagee has rights of security in the deed, but he does not have the land uh, converted to him until such time as he's paid it off. Now, modern mortgages can be for any period of time agreed between the mortgagee and the mortgagee, uh, the mortgagor, but it is normally 20 or 25 years. That's kind of the standard. Now, the mortgagee protecting uh, the mortgage, for example, where you have a first how does the mortgagee protect the mortgage? Well, where there's a first charge by way of a legal mortgage is granted in, rela in relation to unregistered land, it will trigger the requirement of compulsory registration of the title to the land. Now, remember I said to you that there are different systems of conveyancing. However, you have this compulsory registration system. And the fact of the matter is that um, if it is that you sell land, then it will trigger. Now, it is the person getting the interest, the mortgagee, the bank, the lender, who has to then register. This requirement is, of course, governed by Section 41G of the LRA 2002. Now, the creation of a charge by way of a legal mortgage of registered land must be completed by substantive registration under Section 27 of the LRA. Now, if you fail to register legal charge, this will mean that it does not operate at law. And as such, it will basically be downgraded from a legal mortgage to an equitable mortgage. It is the registration of the mortgage that creates the mortgagee's powers, not the creation and execution of the deed. Now, what about equitable mortgages? Well, an equitable mortgage will be created where the legal charge has not been completed by registration or where the land on which the mortgage has been granted has not been registered. Another way a mortgage can be equ equitable is where it has not been created by deed but has been created in writing and you followed the requirements under Section 2 of the Law of Property Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1989. The document, of course, must be in writing. It must include all the terms of the mortgage and be signed by both parties. An equitable mortgage will be treated as having been made further to the rule in Walsh and Lonsdale. Now then, as it relates to protection for the mortgage, oh, what are they entitled to? The first thing to highlight, of course, is that the mortgagor, the landowner, is the registered proprietor, the owner as far as the district land registry and the law are concerned. The main right of the mortgagor is the right to redeem the mortgage on repayment of the loan and payment of any interest provided for by the charge. Now, as it relates to the right to redeem at law, this right is a matter of contract. Now, interestingly enough, this is normally, in English law, about six months. So, technically, you are supposed to pay off your mortgage after six months. But it is really just a legal device in order to trigger the equity of redemption. So, technically, the bank has lent you money in England and you are supposed to pay it off 
in six months. But equity says, by virtue of you signing that document saying that you have 20 years, we will allow you to pay it off. Because when we come to seeing how the bank is able, for example, force or, you know, go into uh, a situation where they sell the property, it must be that the contractual or legal date has passed. That's why it needs to be so short. So that is the point. So this right, as I say, to redeem is a matter of contract. It is the mortgagor's right to repay the loan and for the mortgagee to discharge the mortgage and remove the charge from the property. Redemption is the process by which following the discharge of the loan or other obligations which are secured against the property, the property is freed from the mortgage. Now, a right to redeem on the basis of an express term is described as the legal right to redeem. The legal rules do not allow him to insist, as a borrower, to insist on redeeming the mortgage either before or after the contractual date is agreed. And this, of course, was raised in the case of Craig Liger and New Patagonia Meat and Cold Storage Limited in 1914. So at common law, if you tried to pay, uh, if, if the borrower did not pay uh, on the contractual date, then at one time we saw that the mortgagor forfeited the land uh, to, be more, uh, to the mortgagee and he could still be sued for any shortfall. And that was, again, if you consider, um, pretty harsh. Well, in, re in relation to the right to redeem in equity, Equity looked at this harshness and equity took a somewhat different view. Equity said that as the purpose of the agreement is to provide the mortgagee with security for the loan, equity believed that as long as the advance plus interest was repaid, then the mortgagee should not object to redemption. And the cases which come out of that are, of course, uh, several, but a couple of them we'll consider. The first, of course, is Fearcliffe and Swan Brewery, a 1912 case. And this, of course, backs up the point made. Here, of course, the mortgage property was leased on a 21-year lease. It was a term of the mortgage agreement that the mortgagor could not redeem the mortgage until a date six weeks before the end of the lease. Now, the court said that the mortgagor could redeem the mortgage at an earlier date. And they said that the reason for this was that Equity will not permit any device or contrivance being part of the mortgage transaction or contemporaneous with it to prevent or impede redemption. They said a mortgage cannot be made irredeemable. Now, the significance of Fiercliff and Swan Brewery, of course, is that if they had to pay back or the contractual date was not till six weeks before, then the point, of course, is that there would be nothing left for them in terms of asset base after that six weeks because it meant that the mortgagee was the only one benefiting under the contract. A contrasting case though is Knightsbridge Estate and Burn in 1939. In that case, a company created a mortgage over free old property um, having agreed that the loan would be paid in 80 six monthly installments so in other words the mortgage could not be redeemed for 40 years now the mortgagor which to redeem the mortgage earlier in order that he could create a new mortgage at a lower rate of interest than the existing mortgage it was held that he could not do so the courts decided that the company had the freedom when it entered into the original mortgage and it was freely agreed that the courts were unwilling to set aside the terms which the parted, parties had agreed to. Now in Cityland and, uh, Cityland and Property Holdings and Dabra, here the base lending rate was 7% and the annual rate under which the mortgage in question was 19%. So it ended up being that in paying back the mortgage, you were paying back at a 57% rate if you were in default. The court said that this was extraordinarily unfair. And of course, the court struck it down and substituted a rate of 7%. Now, the mortgagor in the case was an individual borrower 
and, no, and not a company and this uh, in fact went to in its in its favor in contrast to the case we mentioned before multi-service book binding now why are we considering all of these issues in relation to what occurs when you're looking at monies being loaned and parties feeling that they are uh, basically affecting their right to redeem it is because the courts have said that they will not allow a clog or fetter on the equity of redemption we will take a short break and when we come back we'll continue by considering clogs and fetters on the equity of redemption <music> 